So if you don't like me, I generally, generally speaking, think, okay, I mean, the odds that you would actually like me if you knew me are, you know, kind of high because I'm nice and polite and that's it. And I think that that's one of the beautiful things about me. I'm Mr. 1603, and this video is sponsored by Blissey. No more cotton pillowcases. More about them later. Hello, quick apology that the video was blurry in the beginning. That does end pretty soon into the live, but I didn't catch it right away. So sorry about that. Joe Rogan's podcast. Did I, um, did I ever tell you that? What? what I wanted to do, by the way, have a podcast that's it's basically exactly what Joe Rogan does, interview people, mm. but just call it Rogue Rogan. We're going to be talking about watch collect, the watch collecting journey through the point of view of Joe Rogan. Yes. Obviously, very famous podcaster. Got $100 million plus. You know, unbelievably successful guy. But... But I think there's a hell of a lot to learn, um, and this is not something you say very often about about super rich folks because they often become conspicuous consumers, you know. Yes. But we've got a hell of a lot to learn by the way that this guy collects watches and his journey from from you know Rolex, where he's kind of where he started, uh, to today, and really looking forward. And that'll it, it, it's very very interesting yes. um, to 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 kind of to take a little bit of inspiration from. I think that we could all take a little bit of inspiration from, from a guy like this. So, let's get into the first watch, a Rolex Yachtmaster. Okay, so number one, this goes back into the archives back when Joe Rogan had hair. Yes. And when he was on Fear Factor. Yep. And, I saw him which live was gr- you saw Florida. You, you watched Fear Factor? You saw him at Fear Factor? Yeah. Get out of town. Yeah. Wow. It's very weird. I feel like that's a different era just of, of humanity, just that Fear Factor was a thing and Joe Rogan wasn't. Joe Rogan wasn't Joe Rogan. Like, no one cared who Joe Rogan was. There was an era where YouTube clips all made one show. Like, Fear right. Factor was just, like, one show of weird things happening. Yes, yes. So this is a... To this day, this is one of the only... Kind of, like, not super hot Rolexes. I mean, we live in a, in a market, and the market is, is, is a little bit soft right now, and I think will continue to soften. Yeah. Um, but we live in a market where, kind of, every Rolex is, relatively speaking, pretty hot. It's fine, uh, right. Even the Yachtmaster 2, which is widely regarded as a pretty ugly watch. No offense to you, Yachtmaster 2 guys out there. Yep. Even that is, like, pretty hot, relatively speaking. Yeah. And yet the Yachtmaster... Um, isn't. Eh. We, Pla- we, we, stainless steel watch, platinum bezel, frosted dial, cool watch. I've seen them out there. Cool um, watch. I have, I have a story with one as well. It's all f***ing weird. Um, but he had one. I haven't seen him wear it in a long, long time. But that... Let me talk about the Yacht Master kind of for a second, right? Mm-hmm. What is different between a Submariner and a Yacht Master? Like, what, 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 is the, what is the advantage to a Yacht Master? The advantage? It's very obvious. It's the most obvious thing. You always say that, and then uh, now I'm an idiot because I can't. No, but think about it. It's very obvious. Obviously what? More luxurious? Yes, that's it. It's just a Submariner for the guy who wants to say that he has a platinum bezel. Like, you know what I mean? I can't believe I got that. Yeah. Yeah. It's dead on. That's it. It's the same exact thing. Watch. The water resistance is halved too. Is it? Yeah. It's, oh it's my god. Just not as good. That's which is hysterical. the funniest part. Yeah. I'm, in one of the videos that I've, I've made on this channel, I was I boiled it down to Rolex really has like three models, and they just changed the bezel color. Yes. Like Yachtmaster, Submariner. Um, what was the other one? That I, oh, kind of Daytona. It's just you had a chronograph on top of it. Like yeah, it's, right. it's basically the it same. It's basically the same watch over and over. Yeah. yeah. And and this Yachtmaster is still just unpopular. Right, and they made them in quite a few sizes as well, which is pretty interesting. They made them in a mid size, I think a ladies, and then the full large. Yeah. So it's like it's bizarre. They made them in yellow gold. Um, they obviously made them in, in, in stainless steel with these platinum bezels. Weird watches. It's funny that Joe Rogan had that. That is the most bizarre. thing. It is funny that Joe Rogan had. And that. look, his 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 uh, cuff is up. Like he rolled his cuff up to he's, show he's that. He's ready watch for people up. to see. You know what's funny too is the Breitling Colt has yeah. a stainless steel bezel, right? The old ones. The yeah. old ones. And I love those. Super cool watch. This one, I'm like, eh. It's a weird watch. Isn't that funny, though? Yeah. It follows the same recipe. Yes, it does. Uh-huh. It does. So, anyway, Joe Rogan's uh, Joe Rogan's old school Rolex that is not old, not vintage, but like neo-vintage, like early modern, kind of awkward phase. This is the awkward um, phase. It's an awkward phase of Rolex. Yeah. Yes. I only know one person that... I know two people that, that have owned those. That's really? it. Yep. And they both... Died. Well, one sold it because he got bored. Yeah. And the other... I think he's in jail. That Weird. happens when you get an ugly watch. It happens when you get an ugly watch. <laughs> the watch I'm sure someone out there has this watch. If you like your watch and you're wearing it and it's great. Oh, comment, believe me, I would never cool say watch. no to this, especially yeah, yeah. out of steel. I'd be yeah. like, yeah, let's get it. I think it's cool. I think in many ways it's cooler than, than the comparable Submariners of the era. 
Yeah. Like, you, yeah. Know, you know, I think it's probably cooler. Not that one, though. That, that's not, not of this era, but still. This is 19, late, late 1980s. This is a 5513 uh, with Custer Tritium. In the shop. In the shop. Okay, next up is uh, <laughs> a Samariner. I literally just said, and I, I'm going to be really quick with this one because I don't want to keep with, like, boring Rolex talk. Yeah. Um, okay, fine. He got the Yacht Master, then he went more sporty. But Joe Rogan went more sporty, right? Look at the sweater that he was wearing in that... Sh- in that th- yeah. He would never wear that today. No. Joe Rogan now is just... He- Tight t-shirt, yeah, yeah exactly. He'll fucking rip your head off. He's not wearing a yacht master. He doesn't want a platinum bezel. He doesn't want anything frosted at all. Yeah, right. Okay, this guy. He doesn't He's want an everyman. That. That's the whole appeal of the podcast. Yes. He's like, I, I, I got a Rolex. He yeah. didn't get a diamond yeah. one. Yes. He got a, he got a submariner. Yeah. And I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna eat your heart out. Then he got a uh, sea dweller. Because he right. got bigger. Like I'm like that makes perfect sense. That is the perfect evolution of this that is guy. So funny. That's such a funny way to say. It. Oh, bigger as in more famous? Or do you mean body wise? Body wise. <laughs> His he got fucking thick as shit, and now he's got <laughs> a James Cameron. His Samaritan looked too small. Okay, that looks fucking. Too. Okay, this is an interesting watch for a different reason. Is this the watch that you showed me? This is the watch. Wow. You take this watch over for right now. Uh, thank you. Uh, Christian showed me this watch while we were on a shoot in Florida. Yes. A very fun shoot. And it's it's interesting because you showed me this Daytona. Yes. And you're like, this is a cool watch. Does this look cool? Is this stupid? And. No, it's a Daytona. It's fantastic. But the dial is, is what... Well, it's a white gold Daytona. It's a white gold. The whole thing is yes. white gold? Oh, that's that's you the allure it of it. it. Wow, you had it for a crazy price. Then. Yes. Holy. Yes. So, so okay. So, long story short, yes. Um. Uh. you know, Rolex Daytona steel watches uh, now go for mid-20s. They were up into the 40s. Yes. And I was looking around up until now, but for the last year, being like... But there's a whole generation of white gold Daytonas out there. Solid white gold. Bracelet, oyster, everything. Yeah. That you can get for like, at the time at the inflated price, 35000 Yeah. 33000 Now it's 30000 I don't really see them dropping from there. But yeah, like right. thirty grand. That's a hell of a lot of watch. A white, a, a brick of a watch. A stealth wealth Daytona. For me, one of the coolest things, you know, one of the coolest Rolexes you can get for $30,000 in precious metal. Um, the question comes down to the dial. This uh, is, and this, do, you, do you know how to tell that, it, that it's a white gold Daytona? Uh, no, I, they, I bite the bracelet and my teeth show up. <laughs> they they didn't make uh, uh, Arabic numerals with stainless steel Daytonas. Uh, you, but that sucks because I think the dial is horrible. Yeah, I, I think, think it's a hideous dial. Yep. yep. You think so too? Um, I get why you think that. I, I think it's unenchanting. I think it's boring and I mm-hmm. don't like it. To, I don't like that watch. To me, it takes oh, everything. You put my hand over the dial. It's beautiful. It's a Daytona. Yes. But then I pull it off and I'm like, yeah, this looks like a little bit of a mall watch. So I, yes, I, I actually agree with that. That's that's a, oof, that's that's too accurate. It almost hurts. <laughs> um, I, I looked at it like, okay, I could get this watch for $30,000, let's say, mm-hmm. and I would put a different dial on it. Yes. Yes. And honestly, like, as you guys know, like, I'm all about originality and I'm all about you know, about, about all that, but Rolex version, but I would do fully like I would, and I would say it, right. I would put a custom dial on this. I would put oh, a professional yeah. custom dial on this. No problem. It'd be an incredibly high quality dial. Yeah. And, and if, any, if someone asked, Oh my God, is that a rare green dial? I'd be like, Oh no, it's actually, I had it, I had it made. It's, it's custom. Right. Yeah. It doesn't I, matter. I don't have a problem with that. Right. That is totally, that's, that's within my wheelhouse. I don't think it's bad um, for personal use. I couldn't, I couldn't sell it like that. Yeah, right. um, or, or rather I couldn't sell it like that without disclosing. Sure. I would list the watch with both the original dial and the custom dial and say, yep. hey, like, you know, you I get both. I, I'm selling it, so I don't need the custom dial anymore, but, you know, you get both, and I prefer it on the custom. Yep. I don't think the other one is great. Yep. I, I like modding like that. I think that, in many ways, like, something that the Rolex world could learn from the Seiko world is, like, stop is taking culture? it so seriously. Like, chill out. We've talked about this before. There's a lot of watch collectors, and it's very widely acknowledged that they have an aftermarket version of some watch. Yep. It's in a different metal. It's, it's in a different bracelet, this mm-hmm. or that. It is not factor original. And nobody cares. Mm-hmm. They're like, that is an incredibly cool designed watch. Yep. The case or the dial or whatever is made by a very talented person. Mm-hmm. There's a certain level of, that's just, you You went above and beyond. You yeah. made something insane. I completely agree. Uh, there's a whole thing about custom bracelets now. There are manufacturers that are making, they're not making oysters. They're, ma- they're not Rolex oysters. They're not trying to fake Rolex bracelet. They're making unique, interesting, solid 18 karat yellow gold bracelets to put on vintage watches. Or white gold bracelets or pink cool. gold bracelets. I mean, yeah. it's just 
just cool. It's modding. It's being creative. So anyway, long story short, I don't love that Daytona, but I love the potential of that Daytona. Yeah. Right? You buy it for thirty grand, and for an extra two grand with a custom dial, I think you've got an incredibly cool, an incredible Rolex. Yeah. Obviously, you take it swapped out. Obviously, you probably need a different second hand, maybe different hands in general. These things become a little bit difficult. Sure. Um, but if you compare that watch to the blue version of that watch, like they, they, they made the blue version, it's, inc- it's, it's the same watch, but one is far more beautiful than the other. Yep. And you can achieve, not that I would get a fake blue dial because I wouldn't, but, I, but you can achieve that level of beauty um, without having to spend the full, you know, fifty or sixty thousand yeah. dollars, and I can understand with completely why, why a lay person, why a person that's not in the industry, wouldn't want to do that because they feel nervous, risky. You're modding a sure. Rolex, sure. But for someone like me that's literally in the business, that has watchmakers at their disposal 24 um, 7, that has access to a network of, of, of folks, it's just not scary. You know, it's, it's just not scary. Which, speaking of, why do you have an access to all that stuff? Because I own the Theo and Harris watch shop, uh, where we sell vintage Rolex and Tudor and Paddock and Omega um, every day. And we ship those watches all over the world. Yeah. Um, it's, my, it's, it's a product, it's the child of my passion for vintage watches. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I adore the watch shop. Um, I, I fawn over the watch watches in the watch shop every day on a personal level you know i don't even post them on instagram sometimes i'm just so busy looking into uh looking looking at them you know so yeah. i love it take a look at the theo and Harris watch shop the next watch is interesting should we even talk about that at all <laughs> <laughs> you can take it uh this is a breitling super ocean chronometer next watch <laughs> This is a watch that I have. I have the 42 millimeter version of this 46 millimeter watch. Yes. My uncle uh, bought that watch. It's a great story. Um, uh, I inherited that watch. You became very infamous when we I, told the story. I of became that. very infamous when I told that story uh, because I wrote an open letter to Breitling that um, that I thought was great. A lot of you guys thought it was great as well. Yes. And um, and anyone that ridiculed the letter uh, online, uh, meaning meaning anyone that didn't write an anonymous remark, yes, uh, would not respond to my retort. Which is funny, and my retorts were incredibly polite, thorough, and uh, gracious. Um, but uh, but everyone's a tough guy, and you know everyone's a tough guy behind it. But you know, you know hiding. You know what I mean. But um, and we can have polite disagreements. Yeah, no problem. But I thought it was a. I thought it was. I thought it made sense. But we made it onto r slash watches circle jerk. We did. Yes. But boom, boom to that. I I, 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 I might commented back to those guys. You know, no problem. You know, we have fun. You can make fun of me. I, when, if you put yourself on the internet, you are you are oh, fair yeah. game. Oh yeah, You're fair game. Oh yeah, the things that Teddy, Bob, Adrian, you have to go through on watches circle jerk. It's <laughs> just immaculate. It's like. Oh my you. God. Well, I, I left a comment that no one upvoted, but I, I can't even remember what it was. I was basically saying, like, not for, I can't remember. How am I going to tell the story? Yeah. It's, uh, it can be rough, but, it, but it's all right. <laughs> it's all in fun, get, you know. It's all, it's all like, it get, makes you feel bad for a day, and then you're like, wow, I can't believe that happened. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that, you know, when people, when you only let people into a very small portion of your life, right, and for, for any YouTube, for any watch YouTuber, it's like, okay, I let you into my opinions on watches and my banter with a friend of mine you know you can develop an opinion that isn't necessarily or or almost certainly isn't like full and well-rounded so if you don't like me i generally generally speaking think okay i mean the odds that you would actually like me if you knew me are you know kind of high because i'm nice and polite and whatever and i'm way more like i'm way more uh likable in person i think you know yeah you know whatever um but anyway I have fun with them. I responded and I was nice and that's it. And I think that that's one of the beautiful things about me. <laughs> now we are seeing the full opening of Joe Rogan being an everyman. Yes. Which I think he is. I don't think it's an act. But No, he basically is pretty, yes, yes. Like you have $150 million in the bank, but you still, you know, you go, he kind of really leans into Omega and says in a few things like, oh, Omega Omega is the brand that, that puts the work in and like really yes. shows their appreciation for watches. And we get to the watch that he talked about with Lex Friedman, he, uh, which we'll get to, which is next. The way he talks about it, you're like, oh, you... You do, really like watches. You really like watches. You're a fucking geek. Yeah, exactly. You're a fucking geek. Exactly. And you can see his collection, he starts to lose the appeal for Rolex. Like, he strips that off. Yeah. And he talks about... Like, he only talked about that one watch, but... The way he talks, like this is the Omega Seamaster 300M James Bond, the titanium one. Yep. Beautiful watch. And he doesn't talk about it on a podcast, I don't think. 
But I know for a fact he would talk about that it's titanium, that this is a different color. Right. It's so light. It's something of the future. Yes. Which, that's really cool. Yes. And it's really cool just to see a celebrity wearing a watch like this that's not endorsed. Yeah, right. It's a $10,000 watch. A lot of money, obviously. But of course. People spend a lot more money than that on watches. Especially when you have $150 million exactly. from one deal. And I think it's a fantastic, cool, cool watch. Um, you know, I, I was there when they launched that watch. I went I to remember. the bond. Well, it was like when they officially launched it. It was for sale a little while before. That, or the, the movie was so delayed, right? It came out with no time to die, but the movie was so delayed that the, that the watch came out way way first, you know, yes, way yes. earlier. So anyway, I think it's a great watch. I've held it. I've worn it. I want one. They're awesome. Yeah. They're f***ing awesome. Um, I don't own one, but they're very, very cool watches, and I love that he loves it. Yeah. Well, now we're diving into Omega for a little bit, but yep. before we get to the watch that he gave to Lex Friedman, yep. this video is sponsored by Blissey. Okay, so... For argument's sake, sure. I have a cotton pillowcase. T tell me why. Tell me why it's wrong. Well, the, the actual structure of cotton catches your hair and pulls it out and okay. makes it a little frizzy and doesn't really doesn't treat your hair as nice as silk would, really? which is why Blissey is so nice, because it is very smooth, it doesn't snag or catch or frizz or add static to your hair. Really? It also stays cool for a very long time. It's temperature regulating. It was used, silk was used in war as undergarments for soldiers. That, and that was the big thing. Right? I actually don't have a cotton pillowcase because I transferred over to Blissey six months ago or yep, so. Yep. And um, that was the big thing for me. Obviously, there, there were benefits so far as your skin. But, and that's, we'll talk more about that in a second. Sure, but yep. for me, the huge selling point was laying down on a cool pillow at night. Yep. That was it, right? When your face hits it and after a long day and you just got that cool, like it's not ice cold, but it's just a cool pillow, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, that feeling is insane you invest in a mattress you have to think about everything going up so you have to invest in a mattress that's cooling yes and then you don't want to stop the cooling at the sheets by yes. cotton is cotton's fine but it's not regulating mm -hmm. and then it goes all the way up to comforters and duvets but yep. sheets are the groundwork to it all exactly and or more specifically pillowcases are the groundwork to it all and if you want to try this out Blissey has a 60-day money-back guarantee. A literally a no-brainer offer. I highly suggest you take advantage of this offer from Blissey. You can't lose, first of all. And number True. two, uh, while they are basically guaranteeing that you'll have the same experience, I'm telling you, on a personal level, fantastic, fantastic product. Um, I... I have a rough day. I have a lot of rough days like you. And Today. I don't know about you, but when I'm having a rough day, I just think to myself, I cannot wait to get into bed tonight. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I can't wait to go to bed. Yeah, and uh, and Blissey has made it even more like made that fe feeling even more. I can't wait to go into the comfort uh, you know of my bed and put my face oh, on that yeah. cool pillow. Yeah. I know it sounds stupid, but it really is true. That's that's a happy place for for me and for a lot of people. Um, and I think that you need to invest in that happy place. Yeah, uh, and invest there uh, through Blissey. So thank you, Blissey, for uh, sponsoring today's video. Yeah, the holidays are coming up, so buy some for you, buy some for others. Yep. Can't think of a gift for anyone? Then definitely check out Blissey. They have over eighty thousand verified five star reviews and a million Blissey customers and counting. It's and deservedly so. Fantastic product. So if you're interested in trying out Blissey, check out the link in our description for one heck of a discount, actually. I think you really ought to. Thank me later. Yes. Thank you to Blissey. The Lex Friedman watch, which is very, very special. Uh, it, the video of it's very special. We've probably all seen this watch before. The Omega Speedmaster Moon Watch Moon Phase. Mm -hmm. And during the interview, Joe Rogan is handing it to him, and he's doing that thing where Lex is thanking him mm -hmm. and like smiling and being like, thank you. And you know when you give a gift to someone or someone gives a gift to you and you're thanking them, and they're like talking over so they don't have to acknowledge it? Like yes. they're not gonna be like, you're welcome. Yes. They're just like, so it's it's this. And yes. like, thank you. And they're like, oh, and the thing you he's doing that the entire time. But he's he's just talking about how beautiful he thinks it is that you can see where the moon is. He's yes. talking about utilizing the moon phase. Yeah. And he's like, it's a perfect recreation of the moon. Because it's like, laser etched. It's amazing. Exactly. It's gorgeous. But the way he's talking about it is is not from a guy that looked at the price tag, because I'm assuming wherever he bought this watch, there are many other higher priced watches. Yep. It's a guy that if he had a knowledgeable salesman talking with him, which you don't find everywhere, yep. uh, then he was listening to what that man was saying 
and being like, that is incredible. That's so cool. I will take that now. Yep. I want that watch. Agreed. Which is part of the brilliance of it. You could tell he was totally in love with that watch in that interview. Um, And it's so great that he shared it with someone else. But yes, that that moon is really one of the special things, right? There's so many Speedmasters out there. A classic Speedmaster, which I'm sure literally hundreds of you own. Probably thousands of you watching this own that watch. Yep. Um, And it's totally worth owning, of course. But it is great, you know, for Omega, or, or rather for everyone, that Omega also has a wide wide collection of the Speedmaster and they have different variations and they're interesting and different metals and different functions and I think it's great. They yeah. do a great job and this is a beautiful example. So, but yes, it is definitely represent, it definitely represents a bit of a turning point or or it solidifies that turning point that Joe Rogan is a little bit post Rolex. Yes, yes. And moving on, we're, we're not even going to touch on really anything else, but I do want to run through his collection real quick mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll say what we think about it at mm-hmm. the end. So he has a regular Speedmaster Professional, a Panerai Radio Mirror, 1940. Mm-hmm. He great, has great another case. Panerai Submersible. Yep. He has a Trasher H3. Never heard of that watch. It's a five six hundred dollar watch. It's it's wow, and it's a relatively new clip of him. Yep. Yep. So he probably just likes it. He has a G-Shock Mudmaster. He has a Seiko SLA 33. And so far, that looks like it. I'm sure he has many more in his I collection. I went to a theater but... high school. My grandfather thought I was going to be a Mudmaster. <laughs> Um, um, uh, anyway, yeah, it, obviously it makes sense that he went Panerai. Um, you know, Panerai catches a lot of heat for some of their, you know, quality and some of the stuff that they've produced yep. on, you know, on a couple of different fronts, yeah, including right. lack of, you know, inc- lack of finishing. A little bit, this is an old criticism. It's not really so much true anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, not a great value prop. Uh, sometimes on, even on the submersibles, the water resistant, you know, uh, rating isn't that great. But the truth is, it makes perfect sense he went Panerai. I like Panerai. It's not a watch for me because it's just too big for my wrist. But I totally understand why a guy like Joe Rogan would have a submersible. They're very cool watches. They're big watches. They're, yeah, they're cool. They're cool. They're big. They have a very unique look to them. Yes. Something that a tough guy like this hunting an elk yes. is probably like, I like my Panerai. And the truth is, the submersible is probably in the current collection the most Panerai Panerai. Yeah. Right. It is. It is the watch that. Not that a Panerai would be on the wrists of military frogmen anymore, because uh, they wouldn't right. be. Right. But if one was, it, w- it certainly wouldn't be the modern Panerais on alligator straps. Right. Exactly. It would be exactly. the big, bad, tough, not polished, like just brutal submersible. It's just made to work. Nylon strap. Exactly right. Yep. So that makes perfect sense to me, and I and I like that watch, and it makes sense that he went that way. Um. But you know, back to the largest, the large, large conversation here. Yeah. You got a guy here that's worth over a hundred million dollars. Yes. that has a watch collection of watches that a lot of you folks out there own, right? And probably a lot of you guys out there with way less money than Joe Rogan own way more expensive watches. Yeah. And that doesn't make you criminal at all. There's nothing wrong with that either. I, course, you know, I, I have a brigade and I, I make a hell of a lot less money than Joe Rogan, but, right. you know, by, by deca and deca and deca and deca of millions, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but I think it is really cool uh, uh, that, he, that, he does, that he does kind of embody this um, content, it's kind of content, right? You're not spending $100,000 on a watch. It's the, the dream of a watch collector. Yes. It's like, I just want to play with the brands I think are cool. Yes. I don't want a dime. I'm not trying to show off my watch. Just that is a cool watch. I'm lucky enough to be able to afford it, and I will take it. That's very, very humble and cool, and I, and I really like it. And I think that there is pressure in, in, in the watch community, like any other luxury community, to always scale up. It was a conversation about Swatch yeah. that we had pretty recently, right? Yeah. You have to go back to your roots. We produced oh, a really yes, yes. cool you know, film about that and you ought to go watch that. But that's kind of the whole point. It's like, you know, you want, you know, we're only 27. We're young guys. And yet even we get exhausted of all the bullshit of keeping up with the Joneses. And oh. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there feel the same way. Like, we're just not, we're just not those guys. Right? You we're, can see it when we go to events sometimes in someone's eyes when they are, they're like prowling to yeah. make sure they have the coolest No matter watch. how much money that we oh make, you know, whether it's a very small amount of money or whatever, we're just regular, regular guys, regular middle class, you know, dudes. And, and, uh, and that's all I ever want to be. And, um, you know, and that's independent of income. I'm talking about just who you are as an individual. You're just a regular person, you know, and I have yeah. no patience for for feeling this undue, unnecessary, and rotten pressure uh, to to keep always up. compete uh, and always keep up, and you don't enjoy anything anymore. Everything's always got to be better. It's got to be better. It's got to be better. It's gotta, yes, it's too much. It's too. It's just too much. You I, made a you made a post one time. It was your double RL bag. Yes, and then your alligator briefcase, yes. which was just saying. You're just like, these are mine. I'm yes. not looking for anything else. It's, yes. I'm going to take care of them. They're mine. That's it. That is the goal in life. Because that shows, even if you see other cool bags, I don't know. I was going to get you one as a gift. I got you something else. 
but it's just like the well, those are my bags. I, I don't want to keep looking for bags. Yes. I'm happy. That's it. That is a dream feel. One hundred percent, and that's how I feel about wearing watches, right? And you know, I kind of, I, I definitely err on, you know, I mean, recently, especially, I've been looking for an expensive watch, and and so I'm not taking the advice so well. But it's for different reasons. Like I actually do want one, like one gold, you know, one gold Rolex or AP. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah. it's not really social pressure. I really just do. I love watches. So I yeah, I mean, you work in what? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. Um, but the but the truth is, like, I think that we do a pretty good job, relatively speaking, of of trying to make an inclusive community, of trying to make a community where it's not just about who's is bigger um, because we just don't have any interest in Because frankly, that. we'll lose. <laughs> frankly, we'll lose. I just have no interest in, in creating culture like that. I think that we're, you know, a, a positive, friendly force in, in the watch culture. I hope so. And, um, and I just don't like the opposite. So I think that Joe Rogan represents a like-minded individual on that front. I think a lot of you guys, uh, as evidenced by your following, also agree, right? I hope so, yeah. yeah. Panerai, it's $9,000. It's, it's a great watch. It is expensive. And, and yeah. once you lose sight of the fact that $9,000 or $5,000 is expensive, you just got to be kind of you yeah, know what right, I mean? Like right. yeah, Joe Rogan doesn't need to, you know, uh, uh, buy a, a three hundred thousand dollars watch. Now, that being said, if Joe Rogan went out, let's for argument's sake, and bought uh, a Rainbow Daytona, which is highly unlikely, but let's say he did. Let's say he ended up sure. hanging out in Montana with with John Mayer, and they were really close. Yep. And he, and he just, you know what he would say? He would say on the show or or in person or when you asked him, whenever the fuck it was it was prompted, he would say, "This is ridiculous. This is so silly," but John Mayer sold me. He gave me this poem about you know what I mean? Like yeah, he right. just completely explained to me the ironic beauty of this thing, the silliness and and how yeah, but, but you know what I mean? Like it wouldn't be a hard o thing. It wouldn't yeah, be right. a my dick is bigger than yours. You'd be like, I'm wearing the stupidest watch. You yes. would not believe how much I paid for this and, watch. And you cer- and he certainly wouldn't have bought a million dollars in diamonds to buy that watch. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. He just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know Joe Rogan. I don't love Joe Rogan. I don't, I don't, I don't listen to his podcast. I don't know right? enough to know if I... Right. Uh, yeah, right. But I love what it seems to be his watch collecting philosophy is. And that's enough for me. Yep. Terrific. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Check out the Theo and Harris Watch Shop to pick up a vintage watch. Thank you to Blissey for sponsoring today's video. And if you need a strap, which you probably need more often than you need a new watch, check out the Theo and Harris Leather Shop because we've got some fantastic leather straps, including actually uh, new, uh, we got golf uh, golf towels, Rolex golf towels. Uh, really? Official Rolex golf towels. Yeah, I have them on my bag and now they're for sale. That's so cool. go and take a look for your Christmas shopping.